So you live and learn. So those are the things that, it, and it took me a while to get that down. So over a period of time, I started developing my own little style because I had that uh, drawing background from college. And it was, it was, it was easy, this information that uh, one professor had told me that, uh, and I was taking a design class and a color theory class, and he told me, he said, you know, Smith, if you took some of those designs and put them in your apartment, you have an ace in a hole. I thought the guy was crazy. And I, just, I, I threw that out and, and, and just walked away from it. And it took years before they came back, that information, it came back. And then I started doing these little style lines, drawing in the pottery, because I didn't want to be like everybody else. Because you had, this guy was doing a teapot, I was doing a teapot, got two good teapots. He, somebody was doing a good bowl, I do a good bowl, just two good bowls. But I wanted my own signature, and then I went back and started doing those little moving lines around, and, and came to this. So this is more of a graduation over 30 years. And then you got a point that when I was, <clears throat> say, 26, 129 pounds, and high school weight, I could snake around a pot, I mean, and I could hold my breath for about two years. And just, but now, this is it anyway. I can't hold my breath that long. And, you, and I got to remember what the points. I can't see like I used to. So if you look at the pots that started, say, in, in, the, in the museum, got some, some of the pots that started maybe, I would say, probably uh, around about uh, early 80s, versus what you see here. Totally different hand, totally different line weight, because you got a machine weight and a line weight to deal with on these. Is that the signature? Most people think that the signature, and this is the way I work, is that the signature is at, is at the bottom of the pot. This is secondary, in my point. The, the primary signature is the design itself. So that means you got to have a steady hand, so people can recognize that on site versus have to pick the pot up and look at it and say, oh. That's who that is. We got a problem if you got to pick it up and look at that. But throwing, to be, throwing is not a problem. I mean, I can throw. But the thing that I hate doing is the grunt work. And since it's a one-man operation, I got to do it all. But, well, I do it every day. So it's just this thing that I got to do it. This is a work ethic that it's not that uh, I'm picking it up on the side. That's the curse that I got because I got to be in there every day and being able to make those critical mistakes to learn from them so you can see exactly what's happening. Because this is a living, breathing substance. People look at it as a little Play-Doh. It's just a little bit that. But when we look at it as professionals, this is a science in itself because you got to actually know this stuff. You got to study it. And especially it's going to change according to the environment. And what I would tell you about the things that I don't like, this is my personality being put into that. I don't like throwing pots. <laughs> I hate throwing pots, but I gotta throw them. I hate trimming, but I gotta trim it. Because the way I do these is that I look at this as a canvas. And once I, that's why you see so many different forms or shapes floating around. Because I throw it today, let's say Monday, and then come back Tuesday or Wednesday and then size it up and see if I want to get that pot burst. You got a, you got a beginning and an end on everything here. You got to know exactly when to stop. You can't just start fumbling and just, because you can overwork it. You can work it to the point that you can knock a hole in it, you know, because you don't know what. But to have that working process, that means I got a beginning and an end. That means I know when to quit. And you get to the point you can overwork a pot. And people who have done clay will know that. Once you make a mistake, you got to make another mistake to balance it out. You digging, you throwing, or you might see some impurities in it and it's a big rock or something and you got to figure that out. Uh, right at the end, it's always going to happen at the end. Never do it at the end. <laughs> I went on this spot six days and two years and I'm getting ready for that last cut and all of a sudden it's, okay, I don't want to throw it away. So what am I going to do? Do I need to repeat that? Can I dig it out and do a circle? And then i got to repeat another circle and balance out. It's always good to have three mistakes. This way you can always say, I, I thought of that. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but you have this, but you're having this, this, this thing that's just sitting there. Now, a professional would know how to pull that off. It's, 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 it's over a period of time, you can use those mistakes to your advantage. This ball can take a lot of abuse, which is this. This is easy to manipulate because I can do this. This is, this is, this is just, when you go here, totally different ball game. Now you got, you got nothing but body here. But when you're here, you got body and mind. You got to know what to do next. Because if you make a mistake, it's not going to correct itself. But that's just, you know, once you get it to this stage, it's just building up a construction. It's just like building a house. You got, the, you got your foundation, and then you got your middle weight here, and then you got this weight. And if you notice, when I change up, the speed is going to change. In the beginning, I'm doing 90 miles an hour. And then you slow to a middle speed, and then at the end, you go to a, a slow speed. Now, if you're going fast, when you get to this point, it's going to be my, like going I-10, going around the curve at 90 miles an hour, it's going to... Is that building that spread up because that arch right there is what's controlling that top. Now you got you got a situation where it's, uh, uh, if you don't like that, now you got to, another thing is that all this stuff is reusable. <laughs> and the thing about pottery is, if you disrespect it, it'll get you at the end. It don't straighten itself out in the beginning. You done spent all this time, you done spent all this energy, you done put all your money into the clay, and you got this firing, and you done, and, and, but you did something stupid like, oh, I gotta, uh, oh, I gotta go get my head back, it's five o'clock. Uh, I gotta go to the movies. Uh, I'll deal with it tomorrow. Okay, do that. But if you miss a step, and when you fire, that firing will get you back. And when you open that kill, when you're thinking it's Christmas, Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, and, and that's another thing that you have to learn is patience. In, in the beginning, I had patience, but I didn't have enough of it. And you, you know, you open the kill up doing something, just, oh, I, I just want to see how it pops at the bottom look. I opened that door, and that thing <laughs> fell apart. And you, I'm telling you, in, in a situation like that with this stuff, you got to go through a situation of, because you put your heart and soul into it, and when you have broken pieces like that, is I found out that it's, it's better than, you got to mourn over them. You can't just say, oh, well, it's just clay. No, you got to go through the grieving process. It's like a family member that died or something. <laughs> and, that, and then you, I found out the best thing to do is when you want to discard them, is not to put them in the trash. It's always buried in the pot. That's, that's, just, that's just something that you got to go through that. Right, people go in and they take a pot and they throw it in the trash. No, you just if it, if it, you can either glue it back the best way you can, but never put it in the trash. So always just dig a hole and stick it in it. So you know I got a lot of busted pots in the <laughs> got a graveyard <laughs> on the side. You gotta have some kind of sense of purpose, and you always gotta have a story because this is. You start getting this, this, this story base, and what a lot, a lot of those designs are, those are part of what mobile is. This is, this is, this is fish and water, birds. This is, this is uh, recycle, rebirth, life, death, when you have those snakes. See, well, some of them you probably can't see, but on some of those pots, I got serpent. There's a serpent design on it. Now, you remember what I told you about the bottom having the signature? But by me being an artist, I can do whatever I want. I'm telling the story. And once I have the story completed, you got to believe me because nobody else made it up with me. So is that on some of them, you got, you got, uh, you got that cycle of life. Like with here, I don't know if you can see that. Now with here, with me, is that that's female. This is that, this is that story where you had the salmon go upstream, you know, what the, the, the male, they go upstream and do for two or three days, they jump and go to the water, do trying to get to the spawning ground. That's female with the tip, and that's male. So you got that cycle of life. 
Here you got that you got stylized fish. Some people will see as uh, bird wings. It looks simple, but it's just that thing that they have those combination. It takes a couple of years to figure them out. So now even with the legs, uh, that didn't come out. Uh, that's one of the hell mirrors. That's one of those things that you uh, you find a mistake. And, and what happened was, one day I was minding my own business. I was on the wheel. I was trimming like I normally do. And uh, I uh, went too far down there. I lost my concentration. And the bottom fell out. So I used a couple of choice words. And, and the thing popped up. I'm like, now that's not bad. <laughs> I like that. But I didn't have a beginning nor did I have an end. But I knew it existed because I saw it. So it took, it took about three years to get that down to a side. Kept fumbling with it, moving it, you know. If this is what you want to do, get in there and screw up. Don't try to make nothing. Just get it out of your system. It's going to come because the more you work, the better you're going to get. Because all this is number practice, practice, practice. You're supposed to practice. This is supposed to be so automatic. I don't even know I'm doing it. When you get out of school and you've been doing it a while, you go through the cooking technique. A dab, a smidgen, a pinch. <laughs> <laughs> you just you just grab a you know it's gonna work. And see that's the way I do. If I got I've been I've been doing it so long, so if I want a if I want a white glaze, I know it's gonna come out white. Why waste my time sitting around having the same white? I just stand back and grab a little this and a little that. Because this is a canvas. I don't see it as a bowl because my main mission is to get this dried out and being able to put that design on it. Now, I love design. You got to, go, you got to get to a ritual. People thinking that, uh, oh, wow, he can throw pots. You know, you just walk in there and throw a pot. It don't work like that. You got to really prepare your head to go in and, 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 and throw it. But, but with that is, and see what, this is all memory. That's why you got to have it in your head is that you throw a pot and you go, why did you mess that up? Because I can do this. It's all here and it's right there. That's the main thing you got to remember that the play is here. So if you make a mistake, you can always, it's, it's, it's there. But when I find out that I can draw on the pot with this uh, graffito, is that you really don't look at the firing, you look at the design. And you got to remember that the general public, they don't, they can care less about firing if the pot is it good. Is it a nice pot? Because and, and, I don't like to study pots. Although I'm a potter, I don't like studying pots. That's not my job. But I like to go into study baskets, painting, uh, glass. This way I can have ideas. So when I get back to this, it'll give me something new. But if we just play, 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 everything end up being clay. So if I'm looking at and then I collect baskets, I can see this as a basket and I can carry some of those techniques into my thinking and the way I, uh, the way I call. Because you always got another uh, way of doing things, even with that wave design. I did that years ago, but I didn't bring it out. But it just, I knew it existed, so oh, uh, several months ago, I just brought it back.
So what we got? Any question? And see if you that's going back. I don't like saving it, but see. That's good for the soul, you know. You got to, <laughs> but that's it's, you gotta have that thing in your head. While we're using this church key. Candle, you know, they don't even make them anymore. You might find them in an antique store or something. But uh, it's a little fine guideline. Now, when you see the ones I did back in the uh, 80s, when it was maybe 50 or 60 rows of them, it's a, it's a mind, and that's what I could actually see. When I didn't have glasses, I could zero in on a dot in a minute. I mean, I just eagle eyes. Like, but now it's like, oh, I wish that shadow got out the way I can't see. But it's little fine lines there that keep me in check. And once I press it, the line is going to disappear. Or you can buff it out. So that's the illusion. If you might see like, oh, this guy, he's good. No, if I didn't have that line. <laughs> but no, you, you got to have those little tricks of trade that you can kind of move things around that people don't figure out. So you got to be able to sort of make it simple. If you make it easy, people won't be able to figure it out. But if you make it complex, they'll figure it out. So I know I'm going to stick to one, two, three. Hey, if I get all the hours or something like that, I think I can remember one, two, three. But if you go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you're going to miss a spot. And if you miss one, it's not going to match up. So I kind of go that route. That's just like a glaze. You do a, 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 a glaze recipe. Now in the beginning, it's good stuff. And it's more like gumbo. You know, it's good the next day or two days. It's like when I first made it, oh, it's all right. But the more you use that glaze, you say, oh, suck it, suck it. Now, this is, this is, I'm down, I'm down to about, I'm down to about, a, 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 what, two or three gallons, and you know it's good. That's when you take your very best pots, and you, you put them in there. You just save pots on the side. You don't just glaze pots for the sake of glazing. You'll know when it's right. Oh, because you got the right water weight. I mean, everything is just right for that, and you just, that's just the way the animal work. I mean, it's just, you, you, you pick up all those little things. And that's why when you have a body of work, uh, you can explain it down through the years. Because I can look at pots and tell, uh, that you mentioned about which, which one is your favorite. Well, that's just like having twins. You want know, to take fishing. I've got to get rid of somebody. But you can't, you can't do it. If I did a big pot, the way I work, that big pot should carry, well, that little pot should carry just as much artistic weight as that big. Just as way I, just, not about that, just the way I do it. it. I don't try to create anything out of the ordinary. These are just simple pots with my design on them. I don't like too many things sticking out. I don't like handles. If I put a handle on that, with this design, I got more of an abstract. It's too busy. It becomes, with a handle, it becomes a, a front and a back. I don't want a front and a back. I want the whole pot to just, it returns a totally different. <coughs> I, tried to, I tried to change one time, but the general public stopped me in my tracks. <laughs> I thought, I said, I was going to get slick. I was going to get easy. I thought, I got tired of carving pots. I said, I was just going to do blaze on blaze. Quick and easy, quick money. Did a body of work? Yeah. No. Mm -mm. You designed. I can't. I want. They want to touch it. But that's just something you you know over a period of years they just grown to know that I got a design hand and they just look for that. And just the and just the nature of the beats. So any other question? Well, that's that.
Charles looking at his own pottery. What do you think? Of course, he's back with it. Yeah, we got the, get the, we think we got dates on there too on the labels, so you can get an idea when they were done. Yeah, but Jack had a lot of, a lot of stuff, man. You know Jack did pottery too. Yeah, he's the guy that made it. I know. Hmm? You see what I'll tell you about that, that chess key? That's it.